Okay, are we ready? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Ah! Ow, oh, that hurts! <laughs> oh my god, look at this! <laughs> my skin, my skin is off! I am still haunted by that moment. Today, the hair removal horror stories can make your skin tingle. So if you're looking for smoother skin on your legs and decide to go in for a laser treatment and then let's say this happens, uh, you wouldn't be too happy. You look at a postage stamp. Or what would you do if you went in for a facial wax and you ended up looking like this? Joining me via Zoom is Jennifer, who had a laser hair removal horror story that left her scarred for life. And I'm gonna warn everybody right now, this burn photo you're about to see, it's pretty graphic. It's actually Jennifer's leg. So, Jennifer, here it's going up. Everyone can see it now. All right. So take us back to that painful moment. What happened? Um, after checking reviews online, I find a place with great reviews. So I go in for a consultation visible tattoos on my legs, everything seems okay, uh, no problems. I go ahead and prepay for all my sessions. I come back a couple of days later, start with the first session, and as she she's, tells me that, you know, my tattoos may scab a little bit, they may fade, uh, but no red flags. She's going over my legs with the laser treatment, and I told her there's noticeable pain when you go over my tattoos. And she makes a comment like, beauty is pain, no big deal. And um, as I'm walking out the door, they're, they're already raised, already starting to blister. So that picture we just showed, uh, those look pretty horrific. How much did that recovery hurt? That was the worst pain I've ever had in my life. We were washing them off in the evenings. Uh, you could watch my skin fall off and go down the drain. Mm. I would cry. I'd beg them to stop. I would get so sick that I would vomit. That's the worst yeah. pain I've ever had in my life. So what do you do now when you want to get your hair removed off your legs? I shave. You shave? Very carefully. <laughs> You're a smart woman. Thank you very much. Let me bring in someone who has seen it all, dermatologist Whitney Bow. Uh, that was a really bad story, but sure was. you've collected a bunch. You've got a busy practice. Yes, yes. We have some horror stories to share with you. So take a look at this one. So this woman went to get her back waxed for the very first time. And after mm. she waxed, she developed this itchy rash all over the area that was waxed, but not only was the rash itself unsightly, uncomfortable, but even when those bumps resolved, even when the rash resolved, she was left with sequelae. She had brown spots all over her back for months after that incident. Let's show everyone what's happening under your skin. Yeah. Right? This is what happens when removal goes wrong. Let's get ready to wax. So we built you a hair wax demo for the first time ever. I thought you'd be impressed by this. And just to look at it carefully, right? You've got hair right? It's attached to a follicle down here, that little root, right? And the reason that it hurts when you wax is you're literally ripping the hair out and tearing this root off the follicle, off the rest of the skin, right? That sounds like it should hurt, and it really does. And so if you want to violate that natural human instinct for your body to hold on to hair, at least acknowledge that there might be some damages. So let's say you put a little waxing strip on your hair, and I gather you guys do this. I don't personally do this anymore. You saw the one time I tried. Right? You, is that what you, you guys do? know that when that happens, you know what you do, right? You brace yourself. You've all been there. You start holding your breath. You're like, oh gosh, here it comes. Here it comes. All right, go for it. Wax. Right. Are you ready? So then when you're ready to go, you ready? Here goes. You rip. You rip the hair. Get in your hands and ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh. Now you've and all a been successful there. Successful wax. <laughs> so you were successful in theory because the hair is out, the roots yep. out, it's gone, right? But what just happened? What have we left behind here? Right, so when you wax, it adheres to the hair, but it also sticks to that dead layer of skin cells on the surface. Mine so, wasn't even dead. I could feel mine oh when gosh. it came off. Oh gosh. So yeah, so, so that's actually normal, you know, for this all to come off when you're waxing. And you know, it's, it's a little tender, it's a little painful, <laughs> but you can heal pretty quickly from that, right? But things can go wrong when you wax. So number one, the wax itself can be so hot that it actually burns the epidermis. It burns that living yeah. layer of tissue, and that hurts. Yes. Or if the conditions are not very sanitary, you can end up with an infection, yeah. and that can really lead to well, you some... Well, uh, you have an open wound. You all see that, right? You see this wound here? Yep. So if you were to put some cream on there, it makes it feel better, and it's not sterile, or if it if it's, if it's closes this down inappropriately, you've got a wound down there. Aftercare is just as important as the wax itself. Excellent point.
I'm starting to have a little sympathy pain. Having witnessed this myself personally, I feel badly for all of you who are putting yourself through this. So you say your brows are over, or they're too thin, you say? They're too thin and actually the ends are gone now. They're no longer growing past a certain point due to waxing. Hmm. Yes. Too many waxes. Way too many waxes at the nail salon, not a good idea. Whitney, you've uh, covered these horror stories quite a bit. You have quite a, a fair number you could have given us. We've got Jen here. So first of all, how long does it take for the hair to grow back? Well, so in general, it takes about 64 days on average, about two months for an eyebrow hair to grow back. But as Jen said, if you wax or pluck or tweeze or thread, anything that removes it from the root over time or frequently, you can actually permanently damage the bulb. You know, that's the stem cells. That's the part that grows the hair. So over time, some of those hairs just may, they may never grow back. So in the meantime, we have some recommendations. That's the point here. Come on over, Jim. So in the case of a horror story, Whitney, as a dermatologist, what do you recommend that we do? Because it's going to take 64 days, as you point out. That's right. a long time. So in the old days, we used to all wear eyebrow pencil. But now there are these new products. Let's take a look at this one. These are eyebrow gels that Ooh. are actually waterproof and they're smudge proof and they last for a couple of days. So for some of my patients, these are game changers. So I, have you ever heard of gel before? I have. Um, I've never used it. I haven't. I penciled them in. I don't do a great job, so I try. You stay to... inside the lines when you pencil. Is that a hard uh, thing for women to do? I look like a clown by the clown. time I'm right. done. Come on over. <laughs> have a seat, and Whitney can show you how to apply the gel. Because the gels that did it, I mean, it's completely different from using a it's pencil or crayon. It's very different. I'm going to actually have you hold the little spoolie, the little brush. That's an essential step. You want to finish with that. So what you do is these gels, you want to take out the applicator. And what you do first, and you're game for this. You're, you're ready game. for I'm, me to apply a little bit of a brow I'm here. Ready. Let's go. All right, so you want yeah, to I'll start. <laughs> so here's your applicator tip. It's got the gel. You actually want, if you want to face forward, what I'll do is I'm going to start in the middle of the brow. And you want to use short strokes, guys, because you're sort of learning how to gain control here. And then you can work onto the tail of the brow. So it's starting to clump a little bit. That's one of the problems with the, the applicator tips that are a little bit on the thick side. So then you go towards the center. You want to sort of fill in the center. You do want to coat the entire brow because you want the color to be even throughout. But what's really magic is when you bring in that spoolie or you bring in that little brush. Because what that's going to do is it's going to really help to sort of even out and disperse that gel. It is staining the hairs and sort of making the hairs look a little bit larger. So when you do wash, it sort of does wash off. But there are products that should be coming to the U.S. shortly that stain both the hair and the skin. So stay tuned. I think this technology is think? only going to get better. What, total difference, 100%. I like it. I like it the too. You. I love it. And you saved 64 days. Years, I know. Now I'm back 10 years younger <laughs> and I have eyebrows. Nice. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. Next horror story is waxing and burning the skin off your upper lip like that photo we just showed you all. Yes. Just to remind you, it's not a happy camper there. So what should you do if you rip the skin off your upper lip? So the first thing you want to do if you get a burn is you want to cool the burn. And then after you're done cooling the burn, I love honey. Honey is amazing when it comes to healing wounds. But guys, we're not just talking about any honey. Yeah. So if you buy honey from the supermarket, mm -hmm. it can actually have little bacterial spores contaminating right. it. Right. So you want to look for what's called medical grade or medicinal honey. It dramatically speeds the wound healing process. Oldest medicine known to man. They probably developed it for people waxing 10,000 years ago. Definitely. Every, probably happened. All those ancient Egyptians were wow. waxing. I have no personal experience with this problem, but once in a while I hear bikini waxing goes wrong. It certainly can. Very so painful area. It can be very painful, very tender. What I love for a burn in the bikini area is zinc. So clean hands, wash your hands first, and apply a thin layer to the bikini area, and you'll be healing in no time. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything, and remember to check back often to see what's new.